Hey guys, my name is Brandon and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you like what you see in here, you're more than welcome to hit the subscribe button so you stay notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, let's get straight on with today's video. Hey guys and welcome back to Sharing Thoughts, the podcast. So I'm your host, Brandon, once again. And in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about tips for adjusting to university life. Now, I was debating on whether to do an individual podcast for each of the different tips, but I thought actually, I might as well just group them all together. And if anybody wants them in more detail, then I can just do them separately as well um, afterwards. So I would say the very, very first tip just before starting all of this um, is researching your chosen university course and actual university as well. Now, the reason I think this is probably the, one of the most important tips is because when doing your A-levels and um, coming to the end of your school years, you may feel like you've chosen the right subject or that you've chosen the right pathway for you. And then just before you're about to start university, the first year, you realise actually it's not the right course for you and actually you'd be better suited to doing something else. So what I would say is in the summer, um, up towards your first year, just double check that the university you applied for and accepted and the course that you've decided to do is definitely right for you um, because you can easily drop out and easily go on to do the internships and work experience, like I mentioned in the previous podcast. But obviously, once you've started, then you're going to be accumulating costs. Even if you do drop out, you'd still have to have paid the money and then it becomes all complicated. So I would just say make sure you know what you're doing and whether you do decide to go or not. Another tip that I would recommend is obviously just keeping an eye on um, your CV and making sure you know how to write a personal statement. So in terms of a CV, it's pretty much all about you. I would say um, a maximum of two to three pages because you don't want one page where it gives absolutely no information on you. But then at the same time, you don't want to write your whole life story. So for a CV, I would say two to three pages maximum. Um, I might do a blog post about that, um, about how I did my CV and the sorts of things I've included on mine. And then obviously the personal statement is just a statement about you. What makes you different to other people and why should people hire you over somebody else? That's more for um just getting into university as opposed to using it for jobs because when you apply for jobs and um, work placement opportunities they will usually ask for a cover letter and a cover letter sounds a lot more complicated than it is it's pretty much just either a couple of paragraphs or a couple of sentences to sell yourself and why you're best suited to the role that you applied for another key tip that i would suggest and recommend and i have spoken to a few of my friends about it is downloading, well, not downloading, but you're using an app called LinkedIn. Now you can access it through an app on your phone or on a laptop or iPad. And LinkedIn, I like to think of it as a professional version of Facebook. So it's basically Facebook, but instead of posting pictures from your nights out um, and sharing random memes, it's a way to share any work that you've done, any volunteering, um, sharing your education, and just basically having an online portfolio. So you've got your CV, which is obviously paper copy and your LinkedIn profile, which is an online portfolio. Another tip for adjusting to university life, obviously depending on your personal circumstances and situation, student loan might not cover you fully for accommodation, like rent and those sorts of things. So you potentially need to think and look into other options such as those work placements I was talking about, part-time jobs, or little little jobs, little paid jobs here and there. Um, because at university, any money is good money. And if you are someone that does go out drinking a lot or that you do realise you go on a lot of shopping sprees, then that money is just going to disappear very, very quickly. And when it comes to the point that you actually need that money, it won't be sitting there for you um, and you'll be in a bit of a sticky situation. Just keep tabs, maybe have a budget. So just sort of budget yourself daily or weekly or monthly. So at least you know what money is going out of your account. And if you have a job or if you're supported by family, you know what money is coming into your account as well. Another tip 
for going to university, I would say have a little look at any of the societies that are available within your university. There, at my university, there's at least, I believe, 50 plus. Like, there's at least 50. I'm sure there's a lot more than 100, but I know there's definitely more than 50 plus societies. And the thing about societies is that there will always be something for you um, because they range from the sort of creative arts and drama and those sorts of societies to anything like Pokemon or chess or television and film. So I would say in terms of societies, there will always be one that sticks out for everyone. Um, And if you can't, then you can always just make friends with people who are in those societies or friends that you make throughout the university year. You could just say to them, actually, which societies are you guys part of? Um, How much is the membership? And then you could always tag along with a friend and see if you enjoy it that way. Um, And obviously along with societies, projects. So if there are any projects happening at your university, if there's any sort of volunteering opportunities or paid work within your uni or even around the local university area, I would definitely recommend getting involved because any experience, any exposure is good experience and good exposure. Um, And the more that you have on your CV and the more things that you do while you're at university, the more likely you are to be hired or looked at more respectfully once you finish uni. And also for a lot of courses, first year either doesn't count or only counts for about 20% of the course. So I think if you were thinking of doing any work or any work experience, the best time to do it would be during first year. So moving on to the next thing on my list, so being proactive. So that pretty much links in to the projects and societies, like I was saying before. You don't just want to be doing your work, not having a social life, not getting involved with anything else. So being proactive and sort of seeing if there are events happening in the local area or if there's volunteering opportunities to help, I don't know, with photography, if that's your sort of forte, or helping out at care homes, if that's what you enjoy doing. And if there are projects or there are things that are coming up that you sort of take initiative and sort of try and get involved. Um, If you're the sort of person that doesn't really enjoy group projects or socialising with those sorts of things, there are always um, opportunities to do stuff online. So you can always apply for jobs and um, placements and things online, which don't actually require you to go to an office because you can you can work remotely or you can actually just work from home. But yeah, there are lots of options. Um, but I think the best thing to do in order to be proactive is just sort of have a look as, at as many things as possible. Um, go around university, talk to as many people as you can, find out as much information about things as you can because once you feel comfortable in the university environment then once you get into the real world it's basically just uni but just on a larger scale and without the uh, studying in the depth so the next important thing on the next tip that i would say of going to university try not to miss lectures now i know for for a per, from a personal perspective um it was quite difficult um to go to every single one bearing in mind you're in there for god knows how many hours per week um, some of them start at nine o'clock. Some of them, you don't actually have a lecture until like five o'clock in the afternoon. So you'd have had the whole day and then you realise, oh, I've still got an hour of this subject or this topic. Um, but I think during first year and second year, it is definitely important to go to as many or all of the lectures. Um, because if you miss one, it's not their responsibility to catch you up. It'd be your responsibility to email them for the notes or to check up on the university website to see what you've missed. Time management is also something I would recommend thinking about. I know, again, from personal experience, having uh, lots of essays to do um, during first year, some of them were sort of left to the last minute, and I don't think that was the best way to do it. I think in order to time manage, you need to just, if you have multiple deadlines, the way I do it now is whichever one is due in the earliest, just plan out which days you're going to use for that and try and block out the whole day. And then when you are writing those essays or you are doing those pieces of work, do a couple of hours, have a break, like completely forget about the work and then just come back to it later. Because if you're just constantly sitting there for the whole day, no break, no food, no water, you will get very dehydrated. You will get tired quite quickly. um, And you might not work as well as you would if you had that small break in between. Coping with stress, that pretty much links into time management. 
and if you do t manage your time accordingly and effectively then you shouldn't stress too much but if you are someone that does sort of get a bit overwhelmed by situations whether it's in a social environment or whether it's having a lot of work to do just know that you aren't alone and you have your university course mates you can talk to you can always talk to a friend or ring up a family member if you're close to those and worst case scenario you may have to just go to the lecturer and just say look I'm stuck with this piece of work or this particular part of the course is stressing me out and just sit and have a conversation with them because they're more they are more likely to help you out if you admit that you're stuck at the beginning as opposed to two days before a deadline emailing them telling them you're stressed saying you won't be able to hand it in because then they'll have no sympathy for you and they will tell you exactly the same thing I just said they will say why didn't you come to me earlier when you had a couple of weeks as opposed to a couple of days and again that links on to making friends obviously everybody makes friends in different ways some people just will not click with other people but in terms of making friends this can be done obviously through societies just walking around campus I'm sure some of you will have dating apps so you might accidentally scroll past people that you know or people that your friends have dated in the past which is always quite funny but then at the same time it makes it slightly awkward for those people because they're walking around campus sort of with their head low thinking oh my god let's hope no one notices me today the next one is budgeting now that sort of comes in line with um being proactive it's just sort of knowing how much money you've got and how much money you're willing to spend a week so yeah budgeting is just sort of I would say spend the money on things that you know you need and things that you want to treat yourself to or things that you don't always do maybe have it like once a month or a couple of times a month so for me personally I don't really buy chocolates or ice creams or crisps or biscuits or any of those things up here but I think once every couple of months me and the girls or even just me and mine we'll just go and buy some digestives get a bit of icing cream and then just have like iced biscuits which sounds very boring but it's a lot healthier than like a whole packet of 12s or something for example and then also with alcohol same sort of thing instead of going out every night getting drunk just sort of treat yourself maybe once or twice a week or a couple of weeks depending on what your alcohol tolerance is um so then when you actually do drink you enjoy the night rather than it just being the same as any other night that you've gone out on. Student meals and food preparation. That is definitely something that I would speak about from experience. Now, before I actually started university, I didn't actually know how to cook. Like I could do beans on toast and I could just I could put things in the oven in the microwave, but I couldn't really cook. I didn't know how long things needed to be cooked for. Um, I didn't have any of my like special recipes or anything like that. But since coming to uni, I've just sort of experimented with different foods. So I think I made one of my first stir fries during my first year. Um, and then I just put some fish in the oven and I ended up having a fish stir fry. So I had a piece of fish, some vegetables, some noodles, um, some sweet and sour sauce. And that was something I'd never done on my own. But obviously with the help of family and with the help of friends explaining how to do it. It is now one of the dishes that I pretty much do all the time. And it's similar to pasta bake as well. Yeah, so at the beginning of my first year, I obviously knew how to put chicken in the oven and obviously knew how to cook pasta. But my nan actually gave me a recipe to make a pasta bake. So I did end up making a YouTube video um, with Rianne making that pasta bake. Um, so we'd cook the pasta first. No, that's a lie. You'd cook the chicken first. Once the chicken was cooked, you'd cook the pasta. Then you'd put the pasta on a tray, the chicken on top, cut it all up, chuck on some cheese, baked beans or vegetables, whatever you want to add on, oven for half an hour, and then it all comes out like melted, like with melted cheese on it. And that was quite a quite a simple meal. But also in terms of actual meals as well, meal prepping, so preparing meals in advance, is definitely a good way to manage your time. And it's definitely a lot more efficient, saves a lot more money. And the little plastic boxes or containers are very, very cheap. I know for me, it's usually just like chicken, mash, bit of veg, chuck it in a box. And then when I come to eating that meal, I'll have that chicken, mash, veg, and I might end up having a side of rice or I'll put in some, like a portion of carrots or something. But like the main template meal is some form of protein, so meat, fish, some form of energy or 
like healthy food so some vegetables and some salad um and then mash chips and all that just to sort of give you the the calories that you need but yeah in terms of food and meal prep I'm probably going to do a separate podcast about that. But yeah, it's definitely one of the ones that I would recommend. So I put on here another t- as another tip, first year versus second year at university. Now, and, and what I think I mean in terms of that is try not to think about second year and try not to compare what you're doing in first year to what you think you're doing second year. Just focus on the work that you've got at that moment in time. And once you get it completed, move on to the next one. Um, and if you do manage to finish the whole module before the end of the year then obviously you can ask what sort of things will you be working on next year but don't start working on it until the actual year starts because there's a difference between being confident and going ahead with work but then if you rush ahead and try and guess what the work is and you do it all wrong then you're going to have to just do it all again anyway so I think first year is sort of the year for experimenting it's the year for making mistakes. It's the year for spending all your money and going out and having fun. Second year is when obviously the work kicks in a little bit more um, and you'll probably go out a lot less and you'll drink alcohol a lot less and you'll probably have social time, but a lot less. And then third and final year or fourth year, depending on how many years your course is, those are probably the most important years because you've had all your fun. You've done all your work to get you from first to second and second to third year so it's then a matter of building up that last little bit of portfolio and doing those last little pieces of work in order to just close the university episode and start working in the real world basically nights in or nights out so that's another tip for university life depending on whether you enjoy nights in or nights out there is more than enough opportunity and locations for you to go to i'm sure it varies from university town to university town but I know up in Nottingham, we've got a variety of different pubs, clubs, we've got cafes, we've got like bowling and cinema and all those sorts of just generic venues. But yeah, there's definitely something for someone, again, similar to the societies, like I was saying before, there's a lot of non-drinking and drinking events, there's pubs, there's bars, there's restaurants, um, and everything is very, very close. Everything's pretty much in the centre. So if you don't find something in the first five minutes of leaving your house, within another five, you'll probably find some great restaurants, some great bars, a few shops, because everything is quite close together. The LGBTQ plus community, again, even if you're not part of the community, it's always nice to just appreciate the types of people that are around because you will realise that people will dress a lot differently to those in just normal cities that maybe don't have a university. I know that from experience, from being from London, like I couldn't dress the same as I do in Nottingham as I could in London. Um, In London, I was pretty much wearing long shorts or trousers, shirts, uh, making sure my hair was on point. And in Nottingham, I've pretty much just dressed in anything. Like if it's short enough to be classed as shorts, I'm wearing it. If it's trousers with holes, dungarees, fake nails, I'm on it. And I think the thing is with university towns, a lot of people aren't afraid on how to dress. So I think that's just one of the things you have to think about, that there will be a lot more people dressing a lot more open and being a lot more free. So it's just, yeah, being used to the different the different type of different type of lifestyle. You don't really get many older people in university towns unless they just live in the area and obviously then you'll see old people. But yeah, I think it's just making sure that the, the university um, area that you are going to university in has a sort of appreciation for the LGBTQ plus community. And if you are part of it, just making sure that you know where the bars are, you know where the pubs are, you know where the LGBT friendly places are, so that if you do want to go on a night out, you know your safe spaces. Um, Dating and relationships, that is something that it's probably been one of the high topics uh, of, of the university experience. I know for me, I haven't been worrying about a relationship. My relationships are in terms of friends. So I've been making sure my friendships are on point and that I'm sort of balancing my social life um, with obviously taking care of myself. But I think, yeah, making friends and like mutuals, that's probably a lot more important than just finding a boyfriend or girlfriend at university. And I know a lot of people do get into the stage where they meet someone on a night out, they have a one night stand, and then it turns into something a bit more, which is absolutely fine. But I think I think personally, 
I would wait until university finishes because you're going to then have to study and worry about that person. So it's, it's doable, but at the same time, do you want to restrict yourself to that one person when you could be getting to know other people at your university? Um, university stories is not really a tip, but I would say try and make a note of as many stories as you can because going to university is probably the best few years of your life whether you don't go to university, whether you do, just this sort of age and this sort of era are probably the best sort of years to live because you're old enough to be classed as an adult, but you're still young enough that you don't have to have all the responsibilities in the world. So it's just sort of making the most of the friends that you have now, the experiences and the opportunities that you have now, and all of the stories and all of the nights outs that you have, just sort of writing them down. And yeah, just having it as something to look back on in the future or if you film things on nights outs, have a little video and make a little vlog and then it's things for you to look at, look back on um, from nights outs as well. Being selfish, that's probably quite an obvious one, but there will be times where your friends will want you to go out or you'll be asked to go to all these different events and stuff and sometimes you will just have to refuse and just say no. I know that was for me because there were a lot of house parties that I didn't go to and there was a lot of potential friendships that I missed, missed out on having. But then at the same time, I didn't want to put myself in those situations or in those events because I knew I had other things to do. I knew I had other priorities, whether that was other friendship groups that I hadn't met in a while or whether it was because I had university work to do and the deadlines were coming up and I cared a lot more about my work than my social life which in some respects could be dangerous because if you are all about work and you don't balance it right, you can lose friends. But then at the same time, your real friends would understand that actually, if you've got work to do, that does come first. That filters out your real friends from people that just want to hang out with you and just basically use you for your time. So yeah, that'll be another thing you have to like sort of work out and think about at university. Who actually wants to be your friend? Who actually would you class as a friend? and who is just hanging around with you because they just feel like they have to or there's nowhere else. There's nobody else that they feel like they can hang out with. The importance of water. Now, from a personal perspective, I know that's probably one of the most important things because obviously in your respective towns, there'll be bottled water. You'll probably have tap water. But when you go up to university accommodations or university cities, they will have water pretty much everywhere. Um, so just make the most of it on nights out in the bars and the pubs and the clubs they will always be offering glasses of water or you can always have it easily accessible for you and even the student accommodations a lot of the tap water whether it's from the bathroom or the kitchen or the guest rooms it's usually all drinkable but obviously double check with the accommodation people first because you don't want to be drinking tap water if it's dirty because you could then get yourself ill and last but not least avoid drama now, this is a big one for me because I always seem to get myself in all sorts of drama, all sorts of situations. But I think during a university life, you're going to have more than enough things to deal with on your plate, with the work, with the socials, with the going to all these different events and projects, potentially having a part-time job, um, becoming an ambassador for your university, if that's the sort of thing you want to do. And the last thing you want to get involved with is any sort of drama or any sort of negativity. So I would just say, Avoid drama or avoid people that you know will cause drama. And that's pretty much it. So like I said, I'm sure there's a lot more tips than that. But just one little quick run through again of everything that I've spoken about in this podcast. So make sure you research your chosen university and the university course. Keep your CV up to date. Think about personal statements, cover letters for jobs and those sorts of things. Using a LinkedIn profile, which is the professional version of Facebook to sort of have an online portfolio, think about placements and part-time jobs, societies and projects within your university, being proactive, making sure you attend all your lectures, managing your time effectively, coping with stress, making friends, budgeting, student meals and preparing food, comparing first and second years at university, whether you prefer nights in, nights out, LGBTQ plus community, dating relationships and friendships, university stories, being selfish, the importance of water, and avoiding drama. Now, I feel like this was quite a messy podcast. It wasn't really planned out other than 
the things I was going to be speaking about. But if any of those things do relate to you, or if you'd like to hear about any of those topics in a little bit more detail, then don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe um, to this podcast, to my YouTube channel. And obviously, you can check out my other podcasts. But that is pretty much it for today's podcast. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll be with you for some more podcasts very, very soon. They won't all be university related because I do talk about other topics, but I just thought the first couple I would just talk about on my own um, about university and just give all of the tips that I can. So until my next podcast, thank you for listening and goodbye.